I'm Richard Murray, I'm chairman of, executive chairman of Avesco, which is now quite a diversified group of service companies um, addressing both the corporate and broadcast television market. I think we're most famous at the moment for our giant screen LED technology, which uh, we were the company which did the opening and closing ceremonies at both the London Olympics, Beijing Olympics, and in fact we've just completed the uh, Brazilian Olympics. So uh, I think we've established ourselves as one of the top companies in the world in that area. Well, I founded it in 1982. Uh, and then we floated in 1984, so we were a very young public company. But I always wanted to put together a, uh, a group of companies which served the television industry. Our first one was a company called AVS, where in fact we manufactured a television standards converter, which was pretty successful. Um, but one of our early acquisitions, which was in 1985, was Fountain Television, which was a small studio in New Malden. Surrey, where in fact I think our main claim to fame there was we did the very early Ready Steady Cooks when Ainsley Harriet was the star and um, it was made in a very small studio. In 1990, well early 90s we were doing very well at New Malden in our small TV studio there and we always felt that uh, if ever there was an opportunity to expand we'd like to take it. So our senior people looked at what it would cost to even build a TV studio in the sort of area we wanted, which we felt had to be within the M25. And I have to say, the costs to build a studio from scratch are enormous. To get the right soundproofing and all the sort of uh, other essentials for a TV studio made it just impossible commercially to do. However, in early, I think it was 93, Limehouse Group went into liquidation. They were the owners of Fountain Television in Wembley and we managed to do the deal with the receiver where we bought the studio. We paid good money for it but it was far under what it would cost to buy and um, it became part of the Avesco group. Um, in fact yeah I call it the studio in New Malden but in fact it was a drama school and we converted the building into a TV studio uh, and in fact the local council were very happy with that because we created employment and uh, gave it a commercial value. Well, mid 80s, from the mid 80s and through to the 90s, of course, with Wembley, we were an independent television studio and that was fairly unusual in itself because the famous TV studios were really BBC's own ones and ITV's own ones. And of course, the uh, commissions and productions were given by the major broadcasters so for us to be an independent meant you had to offer something a little bit different and we always tried to offer a different service and um, I always feel that the stars and the talent who came here enjoyed coming here uh, it wasn't going to an in-house studio it was going to somewhere different and we tried to make them feel special when you're an independent you don't really have pulling power other than your facility. And our big problem, and it really occurred in the 90s, was uh, there was a period in time where the broadcasters were putting pressure on their producers and the people they were commissioning to use their own in-house facilities. And uh, that makes it very difficult for an independent. And in fact, meant that we made some pretty fundamental changes to Avesco. Um, we decided in the early 90s when we had this pressure from the broadcasters not to use us that we felt we had to be closer to production companies or the major production companies who had the um, power to actually choose where they made their programs. And by uh, a quirk of fate or a lot of luck, I'm not sure, but we uh, were looking to buy a substantial stake in Celador Productions and Celador at the time were losing a 49% shareholder. So we took their place and became the minority shareholder in the Celador group. This was under their founder Paul Smith who um, to begin with brought quite a number of shows. He had quite a number of shows in his stable. Uh, stars like Jasper Carrot, Philip Schofield and the shows they represented Paul was able to bring m many of those here. 
And uh, I remember one particular early show, Talking Telephone Numbers, was a great success, both for Celador and for Fountain Television. I think you have to say the biggest bonus of all from our relationship and investment in Celador was uh, they came up, I think it was about two years after we acquired our stake, with a show, in fact, called Cash Mountain. That was its first name anyway, but uh, it then changed its name to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And I think today is still considered the most important and successful television program worldwide. We made many of the shows here, which was fantastic for the Fountain staff, and also from Avesco's point of view, the investment in Celador worked out fantastically. I think a very important part of, uh, again, making this differentiation from the broadcasters to ourselves is the people you employ. And one thing about Avesco is that we have huge stability in our senior staff. Most of our managing directors have been with Avesco 10, 20, 30 years, which is really unheard of in the television industry. And nothing changed at Fountain. Uh, from the early days at New Malden, we had uh, a guy called Julian Kosick, who did a great job uh, as managing director of New Malden and took over as managing director of uh, Fountain at Wembley. Um, I can't remember exactly how long he spent with us, but it had to be at least 10 years. Uh, his successor was Mariana Spater, and she's been with us ever since. And I think the great thing, well, I like to think the great thing, the feedback I get from Avesco is that our managing directors run their businesses with autonomy. And in most cases, they don't even know it's part of the Avesco group. And um, Mariana's done a great job in that aspect. I think she's got the balance right between permanent staff and freelancers. I know we have a fantastic relationship with most of our freelancers because we try and keep them informed. We try and pay them on time. And um, I think they enjoy working at Fountain. And many of them consider themselves almost part of the permanent staff here. And I know many of our clients like to see the same faces coming backwards. So I think that's definitely been one of our you know, foundations of success here is stability in staff, same faces. Now, for us to be going 30 years in this industry, as we've said, we've had to be a little bit different. And um, I think we've succeeded, and I think that's helped the studio industry. That Each studio has its own character, I would say. But one of the things which has also separated Fountain Wembley is that we have quite a huge audience uh, capacity here and it was just during these sort of 90s and the noughties where um, there was a trend and there still continues today for these big Saturday night entertainment shows where you want a big audience to add to the atmosphere and I think we've been almost number one in that area if you look at big Saturday night shows that's been our speciality and the customers come back, which has to be a good sign. As a public company, uh, Avesco not only wants to make money for its shareholders, but likes to be very proud of the sort of work it does. And I think one of Fountain Television's assets for Avesco has been that we've been involved with some very big shows, which have been great PR for us. Um, I think from a profit point of view, which I'm responsible for to the shareholders, uh, Fountain Television Wembley has had some great years. It's also had some poorer years. Overall, we've done far better in the better years than the poor ones. But one of the things with a TV studio, it's a little bit like an aeroplane. Um, you fill it for that evening or you don't. And once that evening's gone, it's gone. And so some years, all the shows fit in perfectly and you have a fantastic year. Other years, there's clashes, and it's not a nice feeling when you've got to turn down clients who have maybe made the pilot with you, but can't actually make the final show. I think with any facility in the broadcast industry, you've got to keep on reinvesting. Technologies change, you move from standard definition to high definition to 4K, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a managing director here who is aware of the commercial realities of uh, making a profit, and although we've always backed Fountain, I don't think they've been extravagant in their purchases, but we've always had the latest technology here and I think we meet our clients' needs. 
I think there's always challenges in running a TV studio because the shows, you can't choose when you're going to shoot them. The producers tell you when they've got to be shot and there are clashes and problems like that. Um, however, one of the VESCO's uh, difficulties with the broadcast television studio sector is how do we expand? We're a certain size, we've got a good little business here, but there's no way really we can say, and we're going to add another studio and a third studio and a fourth studio, because really the broadcasters have a pretty strong hand in it. And uh, the BBC aren't going to go away, and ITV aren't going to go away. And we've managed through our differences, and I think specialities, carve this niche for Fountain at Wembley. But it's very difficult to grow the business beyond the amount Mariana's grown it at the moment. I think I've got to say a few words about uh, the imminent closure of Fountain at Wembley, which I'm very disappointed about in many ways because I've now been involved in the Fountain brand for well, it's over 30 years. Um, we had a dilemma. As everybody knows who has worked at Wembley, who has even travelled around Wembley, it's probably the fastest growing development of buildings and hotels, office blocks, you name it. And the whole area is going to be regenerated. We at Fountain Studios were really one of the older businesses still uh, within the area. However, our dilemma is one, huge amount of building work going on around us, which would continue for many years. This really interrupts our business. We have to work around the big pile driving and things like that, which made it difficult. We've managed, but it's been difficult to keep everybody happy. I think from a financial point of view, I've got to say that I have to work on behalf of the shareholders. And uh, as a property, this property is worth far more as a development site that is it, than it is as a TV studio. And I think when you add to that, that the BBC have now decided to build more studios, uh, they, those studios are going to have to be filled. I believe there's going to be pressure on BBC producers to use in-house facilities. Um, I had to make the very difficult decision with my board that really we had to sell to a developer. I know it seems a little bit like taking money over uh, maybe one's cultural feelings, but unfortunately as a public company, my duty is to get the best value for shareholders. What we have managed to do is to negotiate with the buyers that we would look after our existing customers. We talked very closely with them and I'm pleased to say that we've managed to fulfill all the uh, commitments which we'd made and uh, even verbal commitments which we've made and given people a lot of notice to when we would be closing. But it is a disappointment for all of us and um, I guess for some people I'm going to be seen as the bad guy but I am also pleased that for 30 years I've helped keep this brand going and to make some fantastic shows here which will never be forgotten. Yeah, People ask me was there any alternative to selling to a property developer and I can assure you if there was at any similar value we would have taken it. One because we've got some very loyal staff and um, as I may have said and told you previously, um, we're very loyal to our people. I believe in stability of staff and therefore that's a big disappointment. But there was nobody um, who was willing to buy this as a TV studio at anything like the sort of value as a property development. Hopefully there'll be a lot of memories about Fountain Television. I think the biggest memories really have to be the programmes which have been made here because I think they give you a chronological sort of feeling of what's going on in the world when you look at TV programmes. And I'm sure you'll be talking to other uh, people who are more qualified to talk about them, but there's been huge numbers made here. I think the other thing which um, Fountain will be miss, miss for is that being an independent, you are able to offer a different service to your clients. And we've always felt here, I don't think anybody would accuse us of being starstruck, but we've always had a huge amount of respect for talent. And I think we've been able to treat them with more respect than if you make your programs in the in-house broadcast facility. 
and uh, I think that's going to be missed. I started Avesco in 1982 and in 1985 we bought the first Fountain Television Studios and now it's 2016 and we're unfortunately closing the TV studio or in the next few months anyway and that means it's been part of my adult life and um, it's been one of the constant factors. Within Avesco as a public company we've had businesses which have come and go gone but Fountain has always been that secure broadcast business which we've had and whose reputation I think has been fantastic during that whole period. So I'd like to say thank you for the people here who have created that reputation because a building doesn't do it on its own.